Good morning, Malacanang Press Corps. Welcome to Task Force Bangon Marawi Press Briefing. Today we have Presidential Communications Secretary Martin Andanar. Good morning, sir. Thank you, Rocky. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to the members of the Malacanang Press Corps. Uh, good morning to all Filipinos watching today. Here are the updates from the Task Force Bangon Marawi. The Office of the Civil Defense has been given a go signal by the AFP to resume its post-conflict needs assessment in the remaining barangays in Marawi earlier this week. Five teams of 62 assessors were deployed by Marawi on November 28 and proceeded with this initial assessment. The next day, a team of 12 members from various agencies also conducted ocular inspection in some portions of the most affected areas. Previously referred to as the main battle area. For security reasons, they were only allowed to roam around the prescribed route while staying inside their vehicle. 47 more barangays will undergo the damage and loss assessment, or DALA, in addition to the first 49 barangays completed. 23 of these are under cluster 11 to 14, and 24 are inside the most affected area in Marawi. After the completion of the assessment in the rest of the barangays, a workshop will immediately follow to input the rehabilitation cost for Marawi. The Department of Social Welfare and Development continues to provide social services and assistance to the affected communities as the local government of Marawi continues to facilitate Kambalingan or IDP return. Based on DSWD's record, as of November 23, 70 out of 135 evacuation centers are still open in Region 10 and the ARMM. These evacuation centers cater to a total of 4,036 families or 21,932 individuals, while 73,134 families or 331,704 individuals are counted as home-based IDPs. DSWD will also provide cash for work opportunities for returning IDPs in Marawi to help them get back on their feet. DSWD transferred a total of 769.98 million pesos of food and non-food items and cash to the IDPs. The task force would like to ensure the transparency and traceability of all the donations for Marawi, be it from foreign governments or international and local non-government entities and individuals. Let me show you a quick video to, um, of our latest uh, Kambaling and efforts or homecoming for the internally displaced persons along with some interviews on their sentiments. Masaya kami sa pagbalik namin dito sa Marawi, dito sa Tokas, amin. 
kahit masakit sa kalubon namin na maraming nawalang mga gamit namin. So, tatanggapin lang namin. Ang importante sa amin, yung kung may tulong man ng gobyerno sa amin, ay sana matulungan nila kami. Task Force Bangon Marawi's Finance and Resource Mobilization Support Group, led by the Department of Finance, is developing a systematic procedure to fast-track the processing and distribution of both local and international donations in kind and cash for Marawi. To keep you posted on updates regarding developments in Marawi, we are officially launching the Task Force Bangon Marawi website. You may visit bangonmarawi.com for Marawi-related news, information, stories, and advisories. A donate page will soon be integrated to the site's features. The Department of Education strives to ensure that the affected youth would continue to learn despite their predicament. They facilitated the distribution of thousands of learners' kits, teachers' kits, chairs, hygiene kits, and temporary learning shelters in coordination with DepEd field offices, DepEd ARMM, NGOs, CSOs and LGUs. DepEd is also concerned about the learner's health, conducting school feedings, and providing psychosocial first aid. Meanwhile, 12 public schools and seven private schools cleared by the AFP have been open since September 5, with two more open since November 4. Furthermore, the DepEd Bangon Marawi team facilitated the provision of land allocation for the temporary school at Barangay Sagunsongan and an additional site to be provided by Mayor Gandamra. The temporary school will be in phases two and six of the temporary resettlement site and is expected to house an estimated 2,350 learners. The Information Management and Strategic Communication Support Group, led by the PCOO and the Philippine Information Agency in coordination with the LGUs and various government agencies, have successfully conducted the second set of Mashwara in the municipalities of Pantao, Ragat, and Baloy in Lano del Norte on November 28 and November 29. More than 1,600 internally displaced persons from five evacuation centers participated in these events. Social services were simultaneously provided, including medical and dental checkup by the DOH and free civil registration facilitated by the Marawi city government. DTI also conducted profiling of skills of the IDPs during the event. To facilitate vital exchange of information regarding the situation in Marawi, focus groups or focus group discussions were conducted among the IDPs. Copies of Bangon Marawi newsletter and information materials were also distributed to them. Parlor games and performances from volunteer artists and Philippine Army mascots were also part of the program. Let me show you another video uh, so that you will see uh, the March of Mashwara activities with the IDPs.
As the holiday season approaches, we urge everyone to drop by and shop at the Department of Trade and Industries Bangon Marawi product store in Makati to help its exhibitors who are home-based IDPs here in Metro Manila. The Bangon Marawi product store features Maranao products such as brasswares, wooden furniture, wearables, Maranao woven products, jewelry, fashion accessories, and Maranao native delicacies. It has already generated total sales of 311,685 pesos since uh, it launched last September 29 all the way to June to November 10 of 2017. The Bangon Marawi product store will be open until December 29. The IDPs may always direct their queries and points for clarification to the Marawi LGU's grievance desk and TFBM field office, and shown are their hotlines. A grievance help desk hotline of LGU Marawi, you may contact 0906-552-7985, and TFBM field office hotlines at 0929-0929-144-9200. Or 0995-356-3965. And that is all for the presentation. To give us updates on Bangun Marawi, we have with us HUDCC Chair, Retired General uh, Eduardo Del Rosario, who is currently the Secretary for the um, HUDCC and Assemblyman Zia Alonto Ajong. Uh, during the Marawi crisis, Assemblyman Ajong served as a spokesperson for the Provincial Crisis Management Committee and was also involved in several rescue and relief operations. Ladies and gentlemen of the Malacanang Press Corps, let us all give a warm welcome to General or Secretary Del Rosario and Assemblyman Ajong. Okay, uh, Malacanang uh, Press Corps, Secretary uh, Martin, Assembly Wansia, uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, makikita natin sa ating uh, presentation na ginawa ni Secretary Martin, we can see the different departments of the government na ginagawa nila yung dapat gawin para matulungan natin yung ating mga kababayan sa Marawi City. Ito yung tinatawag natin na whole of government approach in alleviating uh, the uh, present condition of the uh, Marawi residents. Uh, basically, the focus of our uh, interventions are in food, water, electricity, housing, livelihood, and education. And we are uh, presently uh, constructing facilities like wet and dry market, place of worship, <coughs> health services, and uh, road networks. So these are the uh, focus areas where we will uh, concentrate on so that uh, normalcy can be uh, achieved the soonest possible time. And uh, I can say that as chairman of the Task Force Bangon Marawi, we are on the right track and uh, we are doing our best to ensure that uh, the Marawi City and the Nodal Sur will really achieve what we call Task Force Bangon. So they will rise up from this uh, conflict. Thank you, Secretary Del Rosario. Uh, Congressman uh, Assemblyman Adjong will, will have uh, an opening statement too. Thank you. Um, Secretary Del Rosario, Secretary Andanar, members of the Malacanang Press Corps, good morning. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The succeeding months mark the beginning of the early recovery stage for the re reconstruction and rehabilitation of Marawi City and other affected areas of Lano del Sur. The successive assessment and coordination meetings of the Task Force Bangon Marawi 
among with among its member agencies and LGUs being conducted on the ground, monitor and assess the ongoing construction of temporary housing facility and to ensure smooth and uninterrupted delivery of services to the IDPs. Following the termination of the combat operation of the AFP, declaring the main battle area free from stragglers or any resistance from the terrorist group, the LGU of Marawi City, in coordination with the Task Force Bangun Marawi, started to assist the return of IDPs and residences within, and residents within uh, the controlled area. This process was done through clustering of barangays after government services and health facilities were restored. Marawi City has a total number of 96 barangay with 201,000 population as of the recent population survey. 34 of those barangays are heavily damaged, leading the government to treat the city into, classi into two classification, the controlled area and the main battle area, or as of now referred to as the most affected area following the end of the armed conflict. The post-conflict needs assessment team of the Task Force Bang on Marawi has been conducting a survey on the damage, potential, losses of invest, potential loss of investment, and the general impact of the siege and the crisis that came after it. The provincial government of Lano del Sur with its component city, Marawi, has identified five priorities to support the national government, the government's effort through the Task Force Bang on Marawi and its close coordination with the regional government of the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao to gradually re restore normalcy back in the besieged city. On the physical reconstruction of Marawi, the provincial government of Lanao del Sur has donated addition additional two hectares in the area of Barangay Sagunsongan for the setting up of the temporary housing facility. It also as it is it is essential, also essential to maintain the access for the delivery of goods and the traffic of commuters within the city limits and adjacent municipalities of Marawi. It is therefore important also to maintain the road connectivity of these areas within Lano del Sur and therefore we cannot isolate the people of the province within the confines of our territory. Thus, the construction of two major highways Connecting Lanao del Sur and Marawi City to the province of Bukidnon on the eastern side and the Hatalatagulohan Kapai Highway leading to Kagen de Oro and Misamis Oriental on the western side is now ongoing. This will service the flow of goods and commuters of Marawi City while the main road passes through the most affected area is closed for the start of reconstruction of the damaged assets and properties within this area. We are also in initial discussion with our foreign donor partners for the construction of access road surrounding Marawi City in the city limits, in its city limits, connecting the adjacent municipalities within the province and which we call the road ring road in order to maintain the flow of goods and the traffic of commuters within Marawi City and even to some extent the neighboring cities and provinces of Mindanao. Road network is essential to spur economic life and trading, which we believe could expedite the recovery of Marawi in Lano del Sur. For not only are we focused on the physical rehabilitation of the damaged properties, but as well as the rehabilitation of the socio-economic life of the people. By doing so, the provincial government of Lano del Sur extended livelihood assistance and trainings to displaced women. We have put up a facility for dressmaking, weaving of traditional Marano garments, and cooking through its provincial technology and livelihood development center. We are currently developing this livelihood assistance program by working closely with potential private partners. The availability and quality of income as the availability and quality of income generating resources decline due to this war and other human induced pressures, the provincial government of Lano del Sur in Marawi City will not limit the chance of our displaced women to learn new skills and eventually earn and manage their livelihood. By promoting the skills of making traditional Maranao garments, 
we do not only extend help to the victims, especially to the women, but will also preserve our heritage, which is the source of our identity and our pride. With 22 identified schools heavily damaged, out of the 69 schools under the schools division of Marawi City, the educational sector is one of the sectors that felt the heavy price of this war. Hundreds of our learners displaced, teachers and DepEd staff dislocated from work and from home. The DepEd Marawi has reopened 12 schools as of September 5, 2017, and with an, addition, with an additional seven schools that will commence its regular classes on December 13 or and 15 in the nine cleared barangays of Marawi City. In response to the, the, to the need of DepEd to support our learners, the provincial government of Lano del Sur initiated the provincial scholarship program and has granted full academic financial support to 500 elementary students, 500 high school students, 1,000 college students, because before we believe that much is to be done and to uphold the rights of our children to access quality education. And we will develop this further in the coming years. In view, of in view of educating our children with the status of the siege and their role in, the re in rebuilding our city, we believe that countering the spread of radicalization among our youth must be put primacy, primal, primary consideration. In view of this, the provincial government of Lanod del Sur, in partnership with AFP Tabak Division, sponsored and launched the Bangon Marawi Youth Camp last August and was participated by 50 youth displaced youth selected from evacuation sites across Iligan, Cagayan de Oro, and Marawi. This youth program has been continuously conduct conducted by the provincial government to include youth from various municipalities and just recently concluded the Bangon Marawi Peace Camp in the town of Marantau. To defeat violent extremism and violent ideology, which is the root cause of this war, we need to partner with our community, engage continuous, continuously with the stakeholders for, for we believe that the attainment of peace is not only and must not be limited as a job for our security forces, but it is, every, but it is everybody's concern. Peace is not only an abstract word, it is a duty and obligation of everyone. The Provincial Peace and Order Council has adopted several resolutions to counter the spread of violent extremism and radicalization among our youth. By working closely with the religious sector, traditional leaders, and civil society organi organization, we were able to come up with, a, with a bigger and much broader approach dealing with the problem of violent extremists. With the, RAD, with the regional Darul Ifta of the Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, the prominent Muf the provincial mufti and the sultanates of Lanao issued a fatwa and declared terrorism as an, as an Islamic. This is a progressive step towards gaining support from the ground, from the massive, from the mass base, and to disarm the terrorists from using our religion to recruit pot potential fighters. And of course, to invalidate entirely the spread of their false teachings. The damage this war in is, in co is caused is not only the damage this war caused incurred and incurred is not only on the physical structure but as well as on a more personal level. Thus, by, thus, this early recovery stage of the reconstruction of Marawi, we need to reestablish community relationship, repair community social relationship, and to rebuild social institution to further reinforce our narrative for a rehab plan that is conflict sensitive and peace promoting a rehabilitation that, is, that will guide the process of social healing. Healing both its social and medical connotation is as important as the physical reconstruction of the damaged area in Marawi City. Demand for health services has gone up exponentially due to this war. As a way to support the medical services by the Amay Pakpak Medical Center, the provincial government of Lano del Sur, and the city government of Marawi City through the IPHO, has been conducting medical missions and have been moving around municipalities across the lake by using the provincial mobile clinic since the siege started. Psychosocial intervention has also been provided by our combined team from the PNP, the AFP, 
the DSWD, DOH, and DepEd. Once the post-conflict needs assessment team is done with the assessment work and the finalization, finalization of the rehab plan, the province is confident that under the, present, under the Duterte administration, through the Task Force Bangon Marawi, led by Secretary Del Rosario, can usher in progress, peace, and development to the city that took the beating in order to keep other areas of this country safe. We are confident that TFBM, or the Task Force Bangon Marawi, can and will rehabilitate Marawi and Lano del Sur better than her old self. Thank you very much. MPC questions? MPC questions? Uh, Alvin Baldassar, Radio Filipinas. Uh, uh, General uh, De Losario, good morning, Paul. Hi, hey, sir. Good morning. Sir, sir. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sir, in the open, you know, bidding para sa mga contractors para don sa rehab ng Marawi. Well, actually, uh, we are not uh, going to conduct bidding. Ang ginawa natin dito, uh, we uh, called all probable developers, big time developers, foreign and national. Uh, we allow them to see the uh, the most affected uh, area, yung 24 barangays. Mm -hmm. And they will be submitting their unsolicited proposal. Pagka na-submit yung unsolicited proposal, I will have it presented to the uh, cabinet para ma-decide kung alin yung the best concept na pwedeng i-apply sa Marawi City. Kasi dapat uh, makita natin dito na talaga at the end of the day, it's a new city, uh, lalo na yung Central Business District, at talagang uh, mapapaganda natin, hindi lang better, much, but much, much better. Pag na-select na yung isang uh, proponent, this will be subjected to Swiss challenge. But that any developer can challenge that uh, development uh, project with corresponding amount. Let's say, sinabi niya, we will do it at 100 billion. Here comes another developer. Oh, the, we can only do it. We can do it uh, similarly for 75 billion. Pag wala na nag-challenge at hindi kaya, Yung initial uh, proponent, yung 75 billion, the project will go to the other developer. So, parang uh, mas better ito at mas mabilis na gawing uh, proseso instead of bidding. But instead, we will uh, go to the mode of Swiss challenge. Parang uh, bidding then, pero faster and better. Questions, MPC? Laila Salaveria? Ay, I'm sorry. Secretary Martin, ganda umaga. Sir, kahapon doon sa bicameral meeting, parang ang inilat lang na budget ay 10 billion pesos. Samatalang nung nag-guest dito sa Bangon Marawi Press Con, si Mayor Gadambra, mm. sabi niya ang estimation niya, kinakailangan umabot at least ng 90 billion. Mm -hmm. Ano pong reaction ng palace doon sa 10 billion? Sa palagay ko naman ay merong sapat na basihan din ang ating mga congressmen at ating mga senador sa budget na ibinigay nila para sa Task Force Bangon Marawi. And I can also assure you na meron namang extra funds ang ating gobyerno and when, it, when the time uh, arises na kailangan yung pondo na yun, it will just be uh, up to the president to request from the Department of uh, Budget and Management para mabigyan ng dagdag na pondo itong uh, rehabilitasyon ng Marawi. Uh, ngayon nga, meron 5 billion for for December at um, hindi pa ito, ano, hindi pa lahat na gagasos tong 5 billion eh. So uh, the the public uh, can be rest assured lalong lalo na yung mga kapatid natin na nasa Marawi na sapat po ang pera ng gobyerno para sa pag uh, rehabilitate ng Marawi. Uh, in addition to that, mm -hmm. uh, Zach Martin Yung, uh, let us not be misguided by this 10 billion and the 90 billion na uh, sinasabi ng uh, local government. Actually, ang inihintay natin, yung resulta ng post-conflict needs assessment. Pagka natapos yun, maipapactor in na natin ang total uh, damages, opportunity loss, and rehabilitation cost. Kukunin natin ngayon itong resulta ng post-conflict needs assessment. Ipapasok natin yung uh, LGU master uh, development plan as well as the uh, provincial master development plan. Uh, andito ngayon yung recovery rehabilitation plan ng uh, provincial government. Ito, 
still uh, will be subjected to NEDA validation mm -hmm. and assessment. Mm -hmm. So, ang intayin po natin, yung final na resulta na Total Comprehensive Rehabilitation and Reconstruction Plan na gagawin ng NEDA. At uh, we are assured by NEDA that they, uh, they will be ready for the Comprehensive uh, Rehabilitation Reconstruction Plan on the last week of March. So, yung mga nadidinig po natin, equal lang yan. Mga estimates, estimates uh, pero yung final will come from NEDA and that will be the official costing that will be required to rehabilitate based on uh, NEDA assessment. Kasi mga technical experts ang gagawa nito. Sir, clarify ko lang, uh, expected po natin last week ng March? Last week of March okay. kasi we'll be consulting so many experts to come up with the total package. Kailangan very meticulous yung proseso natin. It nas, it, uh, close to reality yung sasabihin nilang figure. But nevertheless, before na ma-receive natin yung master rehabilitation plan, yung sinabi ko kangina, that will be the focus of our early rec recovery efforts. Para matulungan natin mag-bring ma back ang normalcy, kaya nagtutulong-tulong ang lahat ng departments at the moment, even without the master rehabilitation plan or the costing that will be submitted by NEDA. Okay, thank you. Alvin, Laila. Sir Secretary Del Rosario, Sir, do we already have a policy on whether we will be compensating the owners of private properties that were damaged in the conflict? Uh, we don't have any uh, policy yet. Uh, we need the uh, PCNA so that we can uh, see the total picture. And I think uh, by that time, uh, we will uh, crop up with the policy direction that would be approved by the President. Okay. Question? MPC? Uh, Joseph Morong. Yes, sir. John. I've been monitoring your Twitter, so I'm, yeah. I would like to pick your mind about the BBL. BBL. You've experienced firsthand no, the effect of violent yeah. extremism. And they say that the BBL will solve, if not not solve, but better, can help no, avoid that kind of incident again. Why do you think that is so? Well, well, number one, uh, of course, BBL is a product of a negotiation uh, between MILF and the government of the Philippines. It has been going on for more than two decades. Yes. Uh, although it will not really solve the transitional, uh, transnational crimes, you know, uh, the spread of global terrorism, but it will, uh, in some ways, um, cover up the issue of social narrative in justice, which has been used by this uh, terrorist group as a means to recruit further fighters. And, uh, you know, they've been using the issue of, you know, self-determination, the aspiration of the Bangsamoro people, uh, as, a, as their platform you know, to recruit uh, fighters and potential fighters. If we have partnered with other, like for example, the MILF, we partner with them as one of our, you know, one of the, one of our partners to really uh, maintain peace and order in the area. Uh, experience would tell us that uh, information and policing the villages and communities by the locals themselves would be much effective. In, in trying to guarantee peace and order uh, in, in the arm. That's one. You know, as, uh, if we have the BBL and there are provisions in the BBL that can assimilate, can incorporate the fighters from being rebels, they will be decommissioned and they will be part of the military asset of the Philippine government, then I think it's much easier and effective uh, by using them as a means to really curb the rise of violent extremists in the arm. With regard to sir, to that you know, security aspect, no, I think in the present BBL, what they have proposed is parang an independent Bangsamoro police. Mm -hmm. That has been a source of issue before yeah. in the past administration. Do you agree with establishing a separate Bangsamoro police? I think it's a matter of really maximizing the resources the RMM can provide in so far as maintaining the peace and order situation in the country specifically in the arm alone. Uh, but it will go through Congress because the PNP has, uh, the, with its national uh, character, there's no PNP. Like, you, you, you try to uh, say, for example, uh, you know, regionalize uh, PNP, it will still be under one umbrella, under the PNP. So it, it can go through a process of debate in Congress. But I think it's one of the positive exploration, no? for example, if we try to look into the feasibility of such proposal. 
I think we're talking about BBL and it will offer so many changes and reforms in the Constitution once Congress would debate on federalism and perhaps lead on to debate on the BBL, then it's not, it's not something that we can explore, um, the idea uh, of that. Now, how do you fit the BBL in the efforts of this present administration to push for federalism? Well, I think uh, uh, President uh, Duterte, being a Maranao himself in a, in a local of Mindanao, is very much endowed with the, you know, the, histor the historical the knowledge of the Moro people. He himself is a Moro, is a Maranao. And uh, in order to really incorporate the provisions of the BBL, I think in, rela in relative to the proposal to federalize the country, it's only a matter of uh, using the BBL, the provisions, as the governing laws for the proposed Bangsamoro state. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, there are so many methods and so, so many, uh, you know, means of uh, adopting a feder federal form of government. It's not really universal all over the world. We can have and in part uh, and introduce this federal system by way of also making it sure that it will be responsive to our cultural differences and identities. So we can actually use BBL uh, as the governing laws for the proposed uh, state, Bangsamoro State, not necessarily, univer not necessarily um, dissimilar with other regions, because you also have to federalism, you have to make a law that is responsive to the needs and aspiration, uh, unique you know, needs of its region. So we can, there's, there's so many avenues to really in, you know, incorporate these two, to reconcile these two. All right, sir, thank you for thank that. You. Okay, uh, Jonah, Jonah, you, microphone, please. Assemblyman uh, Zia, sir, um, just would like to get your thoughts on martial law, because December 31, uh, is there a need? Kayo po yung nasa ground zero. I think it would depend on the ground troops and how the task force bang on Marawi would assess the situation on the ground. Remember, uh, the post uh, assess needs and assessment team will not only conduct uh, its assessment on based on the damaged <coughs> properties, but the impact uh, of the siege, you know? Uh, the crisis itself. Uh, I, as a local, I would say uh, the end of the war does not necessarily mean the normalcy of the peace and order situation. Um, actually, we've been saying this all along, the crisis will really start after the war. You know? And there are several uh, reports that we've been receiving that uh, the recruitment activity is now ongoing in some other towns. So we fear that if the, you know, if we probably uh, be lenient about imposing security protocols that might this might the, the terror group might use this as a portal to in you know uh, to uh, to form and regroup again and then attack another town which basically they that's what we've been saying all along they will attack another town not necessarily Marawi city or Lano de Sur, but you know maybe some provinces so I guess uh, it's a matter of necessity and protecting the, the civilians that would be what it would, would put primacy uh, as far as uh, the national government would decide whether they will lift the martial law or they will maintain uh, impo the imposition of martial law uh, in Mindanao. Okay, uh, General Derisayo, you have a uh, reaction on that? Well, uh, I would like to appreciate yung uh, sinabi ni Assemblyman Sia. Uh, it's really very important that we can uh, continue uh, to ensure that the whole area, not only Marawi City, but the whole of Mindanao will be secured from any terrorist threat. Muugog na ngayon at nakuha natin from intelligence reports yung massive recruitment na ginagawa ng kabila, promising so much amount of money as, I, uh, as high as 100,000 pesos just to be uh, uh, recruited and be a member of the uh, ISIS group. Kaya uh, uh, we support the statement of Assemblyman Sia. Uh, we will uh, be coordinating with the Armed Forces of the Philippines and the Philippine National Police so that we can uh, properly assess and make the necessary recommendation to the President as to the extension or not of the martial law uh, in affected areas. But for now, sir, would you recommend the extension of martial law? Uh, personally, I would like uh, that uh, martial law will uh, continue during the rehabilitation phase because as chairman of Task Force Bangon Marawi, my main concern is the security of the whole rehabilitation effort. 
Just imagine if something will happen in Marawi City during the rehabilitation phase. Baka wala nang pumuntang mga contractors at laborers. Mahihirapan tayo sa rehabilitation. Kaya ang sinasabi ko nga on the ground, hindi lang physical structures ang dapat natin pagtuunan ng pansin. But also, we need the involvement and support of the entire citizenry to be with us in the rehabilitation. And that, that's not only in the physical structure, but in the security aspect. Kailangan sila mismo, they should drive away or neutralize yung spread ng uh, recruitment ng uh, ISIS group in Mindanao. Not only in Lanao del Sur or Marawi City. Okay, Jonah? Sir, sabi nyo, uh, personally, you will recommend to the President. We're talking of how many man months more? Uh, I, I, I said, uh, personally, yun ang aking pananaw. Ano? Like we will consult many? with the uh, right authorities, Armed Forces of the Philippines and the PNP, and uh, I hope we can be together in tandem with the uh, civilian government. Kasi after all, alam nila nangyayari on the ground. They should know better. And the source of information will come from the barangays kung saan nagsisimula ang mga recruitments. Mm -hmm. And sinasabi sa atin, Assemblyman Sia, massive ngayon ang recruitment. And we do not like to have another Marawi incident. Okay, thank you, sir. A question, ABC? Assemblyman, kung kayo pong tatanungin ng presidente, ano pong isasagot niyo doon? Oh. But that would, again, that would depend uh, on the situation on the ground, no? to say that uh, we want to maintain or to lift, it's still <coughs> premature because the pre-assessment and its uh, team has been is still conducting its, uh, no, its uh, assessment work. And the military uh, and the police is still continuously doing the retrieval operation uh, in the main battle area or the most affected area. So uh, right now there are reports uh, that recruitment activity is, going on, uh, is, is ongoing. So we really have to decide based on, on the, you know, what's, what's happening on the ground. But if we are, if I would, would be asked right now, I think the necessity of maintaining a martial law uh, dictates that, you know, uh, kailangan talaga dahil mayroon pa lang, may pockets of uh, no, recruitment pa nangyayari dyan uh, surrounding, the, surrounding the, uh, lake, the lake. Okay. Last two questions. Uh, Dexter Ganibe. To be followed by Raymond Tenasa. Magandang tanghali po. Uh, yung sinasabi nyo pong recommendation, possible na recommendation nyo po sa Pangulo, extension ng martial law, it would be, would it be uh, Mindanao wide or sa Marawi na lang po? Uh, it depends on the assessment of the AAPPNP. <coughs> Kasi uh, ako as chair ng Task Force Bangon Marawi, ang aking tinatanong lang naman itong rehabilitation. Pero the AFP and PNP, ang tinatanong nila, yung kabungan. So if, if, it, if ever it will be extended, uh, and the recommendation will officially come from the AFP and the PNP. So supportado niyo po yan? Yes, definitely. Thank you. Secretary Martin, you have a um, comment on that. Raymond Tinasa. Kay Yosek Del Sario. Sir, uh, yung mga nagbigay po ng mga pledges from the international community, uh, I understand may mga galing sa US, China, Japan, Australia, and even European Union. All in na ba? Tinanggap ba natin or we still uh, studying? Dahil may mga kondisyon ng Pangulo sa pagtanggap ng mga grants or even mga donations. Uh, as mentioned e earlier sa briefing ni Secretary Martin, yung Department of Finance ang magkakaroon ng hub para dito sa mga pledges. Mm -hmm. And yung lahat ng mga donations, uh, most likely coming from other countries, they're also waiting for the um, master rehabilitation and reconstruction plan. Kasi it's premature for them uh, to give any amount dahil hindi pa naman niya alam kung magkano ba totality na kailangan. Kung uh, sinabi ng, uh, ng, uh, sa PSNA, sa, ng NEDA, resulta ang kailangan, $1 billion. So they will know uh, what amount they, ca they can give. Kung sabihin naman ng uh, NEDA, ang kailangan natin, $3 billion, which is 150 billion pesos. So, they are waiting for that. Yung resulta ng PCNA and the uh, comprehensive rehabilitation and reconstruction plan that would be coming out from NEDA. Thank you, Secretary Martin. Sir, nabanggit nyo kanina yung project ng DTI. Meron mm -hmm. silang parang showroom sa Makati. Mm -hmm. aside, from Ma sila. aside from Makati City, kasi baka may interested din from Luzon and other parts of Visayas and Mindanao. Mm -hmm. Wala tayong balak na parang expand to other mga supermarkets para mas mm -hmm. malaki yung 
uh, mga interesadong bibli ng mga Maranao or uh, Marawi products? That would be ideal, uh, Raymond. Uh, I'm not so sure sa, sa inyo, uh, Assemblyman, kung meron kayong mga mga products na binibenta sa kagayang di oro at sa iba pang iligan. Maybe you can answer the question of uh, Raymond. Uh, sa ngayon, pinapartner pa na, naghanap pa tayo ng uh, conduit natin, no? uh, maging partner natin para pagbebenta ng mga local products. Uh, lalo na yung mga finished product na, na nagagawa ng mga displays at yung mga displaced persons, yung mga kababaihan. Pero meron na po sa Gaisano, uh, I'm sorry, Robinsons sa may Iligan and Gaisano City. Doon po yung nabibenta yung mga produkto yun na gawa po ng ating mga uh, na-displaced na pamilya, mga, lalo na yung mga kababaihan. Kasi mostly uh, uh, ito pong mga produkto ay mga malong, traditional malong, mga garments po na ginagamit ng mga kababaihan. Okay, last question, uh, Alvin Baldasar. Microphone. Sir, makaiba lang ako sa Marawi. Kaya, Secretary Martin, Sec Sec Mart uh, sa Monday and Tuesday, may transport strike. Mm -hmm. uh, when do we expect any announcement from Malacanang, whether kung may suspension o wala, mm -hmm. this coming Monday and Tuesday? Uh, kakausapin ko muna si Executive Secretary Bingbong Medialdea patungkol sa topic na yan sa transport strike. But going back to Marawi, uh, na natanong ni Raymond kasi, um, again, I'd like to reiterate that uh, we've launched the Bangon Marawi website. So for uh, the viewers right now, uh, the listeners, uh, please visit bangonmarawi.com and you will see the, the different uh, sub-sites. Uh, from home, about uh, Task Force Bangon Marawi, the stories, news, and soon you will also have a donate box here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you, Malakanyang Press Corps. Thank you, Presidential Communications Secretary Martin Andanar. Thank you, HADC Chair Thank Eduardo, you. Secretary Eduardo Del Rosario, <coughs> and Assemblyman Zia Alonto Adnyong. Back to our main studio sa Radio Pilipinas and PTV.